All right, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and thank you for uh, <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today on the live stream. Uh, today's masterclass is going to be about how to create retro VHS and film looks using native effects directly inside of Premiere Pro. And uh, this is something that people have been doing for a long time. You're starting to see a lot more of this, particularly with uh, just a lot of the kind of homespun videos that you're seeing. I mean, people are trying to just get more creative, right? And retro looks, it's funny, if you kind of lived through the retro days of video production, you were always trying to minimize and eliminate all of the anomalies that went along with sort of analog and early digital video. You know, hiss, noise, scan lines, you know, bad <laughs> RGB splits, you know, scratches, all of these things. We're trying to get rid of them all. Now, not unlike in music, we're kind of putting it all back in for effect, for that kind of retro feel. And there's just something very aesthetically pleasing about noise and kind of blurred color. As much as if anyone was paying attention yesterday, you know, now uh, <laughs> One of, uh, one of our uh, esteemed camera makers uh, released a, a 12K camera, or I don't know if it's released, it was announced yesterday. A 12K, 12K. Can you even say that? 12K, it's insane. Well, we're not gonna be in 12K today. <laughs> we're going back old school. Four by three DV NTSC or DV PAL, uh, depending upon where you are in the world. So in any case, it's lovely to see you all. Thank you so much for joining. As always, we're coming to you live on uh, Behance, Adobe Live, YouTube, and Twitter Periscope. So thank you so much for joining. Couple quick shouts before we get started. Steve Festus, Cosmo, always great to see you. What is up? Howard Pinsky, great to see you, man. Howard will be up later today, of course. Monica Kana, hello. Ritorshi Bhattacharya, nice to see you. Cal, always lovely to see you. Wade, Richard Newberry. All right, always lovely what's happening. Cressamir, good to see you. Kirby Films, we enjoy every day. So nice to see you as well. We've got Stevie and Desiree and Hakan Akben. How's it going, man? Long time no see. Hakan and I did lots of touring for Adobe way back in the day uh, in Istanbul and had some really amazing shows there. So hey, super cool to see you, man. Hope, uh, hope you're working on some new music and some new stuff. Uh, in any case, okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. What's up, Hetvi Shah? and uh, switch over to Premiere really quickly. So let me go ahead and do that, and uh, we will kick it off. Also want to remind some of you, or all of you, that uh, if you're in the chats, we are actually following the chat that is happening over at behance.net slash Adobe Live. So uh, whether you're on Twitter, Periscope, or the other YouTube channel, or anywhere else, Behance.net slash Adobe Live is the chat I'll be following through the masterclass. So if you want to ask me something, that is the place to be. I'll try and look over at the other ones, but uh, it's a little hard to see at times. Okay, and of course, Tim has to say cat videos in 25K. Thank you, sir. Yes. And uh, <laughs> what's up, Chris Austria? All right, I mean, we're all nice to see you. 12K, so you can count the molecules. No joke, Steve. All right. Now, before we get started, stretching this intro out here, um, some of you may be aware that earlier this week, I uh, had the pleasure of premiering the very first Adobe Stock Film Fest. And uh, this occurred on Wednesday. Now, we didn't broadcast this on Adobe Live, although next Thursday, the 23rd, I'll be um, interviewing and going over and, and live designing with two of the filmmakers that were part of the uh, Film Fest 2020. In any case, got to showcase uh, 13 incredible films done by creators all over the world. And uh, the the deal was they had five days to do it. They couldn't shoot anything. They couldn't use their own camera. So all of it had to be stock video footage. All the audio had to come from Epidemic Sound. Now this was, this was happening before we introduced this into Premiere. So they were using Epidemic, but of course now you could grab your sound directly from within Premiere Pro. And then naturally the whole thing had to be edited in Premiere. And if you haven't checked it out already, you can find the archive of that on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. I'm sure it's chapterized by now. I would highly recommend, if you're looking for some inspiration, and again, it's all about storytelling, but with someone else's visual and how you kind of homogenize all of that and create your own look and feel. And it was really something. There were really some just truly, well, all of them were truly amazingly moving pieces and really got me and many others thinking. Well, as a result of that, I had several dozen DMs across various platforms saying, you know, this was so inspirational, but 
you know, I feel like at times I'm just, I'm just not inspired or it's just not going the way I want. And I don't even know how do these people find this inspiration and, you know, does it always have to be brilliant? You know, I'm, I'm trying to do these things and they, they just feel bad or they look bad or I'm not happy with them. And ugh, is there an answer to this? All right. Well, the short answer is, of course, I actually did an interview earlier this week with some of you may be familiar with Dan Deacon. He's an incredible uh, uh, um, instrumentalist, musician and visual artist. And uh, we did a thing for BuzzFeed and we were talking about this concept of, you know, staying motivated and how there are times where you're just not right. And there are days where it's just not happening. It's just not you're just not creating. I mean, you might be making something, but it's just not wonderful. Well, guess what? That is what happens, right? Every day, every day can't be a number one song. Every day can't be, you know, a top design. Every day can't be just like amazing output. Some days are going to suck. Some days you're just not going to feel it. Some days your inspiration is just going to, it'll start here and just start to taper off. And that's okay. That is something which it doesn't matter if you're new to creativity or you're an old school like yours truly. Once you embrace the fact that sometimes you're hot and sometimes you're not, things get better and you figure out ways to actually excel even faster and more efficiently when you get over that hurdle. So in the spirit of that, I thought I would start today with a piece that I did, gosh, six years ago, designed, actually recorded specifically for Behance. Now, the thing is, I didn't create this video with all of these problems. <laughs> that wasn't the idea. I was actually supposed to be singing a song that I was playing for uh, a musician that I really dig, Ann Wilson of Heart. What happened was on this particular day, I wound up doing 27 takes of this one performance, all bad. Everything was just awful. And I just, it just didn't happen on this day. So this is a, a short minute and 45 second piece called Creative Meltdown. This is for all of you. By the way, this was not staged. I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to be humorous. I cut it together quickly, but this is actually the recording session over about a seven hour period. You can also see over time how I'm getting more and more frustrated because my hair starts to get flatter. I start to look a bit more sweaty and I'm just, you can tell I'm just starting to kind of lose it. So check it out. This is called Creative Meltdown. And uh, I hope you enjoy this. Oh, and hold on one second here. Let me uh, just wind it back to the beginning so you can get the full effect. Richard, this is one of your favorites. Oh, nice. <laughs> Love that. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to do, we're going to do the uh, completely unobstructed view here. So I'm going to get myself out of the frame. And here we go. Well, hello, Behancers. You know, sometimes it's not the things that inspire you, it's the people that inspire you. And today, I wanted to simply record a song uh, for someone who is extremely inspirational for me and someone that I truly love. And the song goes like this. Quite some time, quite some... <clears throat> White <laughs> gambler understand. Knock down the bush. Oh, I've been, <clears throat> I've been sitting it, I've been sitting it out. Quite some. Mother f No. Every day I catch a glimpse of your beautiful smile So I get myself together Which can sometimes take a while I can prove it Straight on Oh my god Did I run out of f***ing space? I guess I did Girl, I sh Mother f me. Ah, mother humper fracking. <sighs> oh, I guess this is over. All right. So, I uh, hope you enjoyed that very honest, <laughs> very honest look at, uh, you know, sometimes you're hot and sometimes you're not. And uh, like I said, that was all real. 
That was not stage. That was an entire wasted day. And the thing is, I came back the next day and first take, first attempt, nailed it. You can find, by the way, that and the, the finished version and like stills along the way of the setup and everything on my Behance page. So behance.net slash Beetlejace. Uh, it's called Creative Meltdown. And then there's a link to the finished version, which is a performance of a song called Straight On By Heart, which is also available on Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play, Amazon, and everywhere that music is streamed or sold. So, all right, on to the task at hand. We're gonna start with creating VHS retro looks uh, here in Premiere Pro. And as I mentioned, if you, if you were listening in the, um, in the introduction there, this is something which you know, we see a lot today uh, just kind of going, yeah, we're just, we're, we're feeling nostalgic and creating these kind of retro looks. One, because what's retro to some may be completely new to others. Two, we're just trying to change up stylistically how things look. You know, one of the funny things is that as these cameras get better and better, we're capturing, you know, every single pixel or as Tim, what did you just say there? What did you say? The, I just missed it. You had something, not meow, meowxel. What did you write? I can't find it. the meowlicules. <laughs> I mean, you're capturing so much detail that, I mean, I think there's a school of thought. I'm certainly part of this school where it's like, there's so much detail that you, you, you lose a bit of the soul, right? It's just, it's too clear. It's too, not to say that that's a bad thing, especially on capture, but you know, now it's kind of like, mm, let's, let's like dirty it up, gritty it up, make it just do something different. So this is one way to do that. Now I'm gonna show you two different methods for applying this VHS uh, effect. One of which I saw a long time ago. I, I swear, I think it was Jordy from Cinecom. I, I'm pretty sure it was Cinecom. Uh, there's another guy, Tyler White, who did a, a, a tutorial on this. So I'm gonna show you this method first and um, it uses all native effects. And then I'm gonna show you a second method, which is a little bit different. They, they both take about the same amount of time. Totally different native effects though involved. And that one is by one of our very own dear friends, Premier Gal, Kelsey Brandon. So many of you know Kelsey. She's awesome, we've worked together. Uh, this is one of her tutorials. And this version, I actually like even a little bit better. Um, but they both work, they're both great. I just wanna show you both options. And then at the end, we're gonna go through some of the other Lumetri options here, as well as using some different overlays and, th and some things that you can acquire online, including some very cool aspect ratio overlays by my friend Vashi Nedimansky. You probably know his site, vashivisuals.com. Vashi's an incredible director, filmmaker, editor, everything, music editor. I mean, he's just I mean, one of the greatest humans I've ever known. Uh, he's created a ton of free content. In fact, he's doing a whole series of tutorials for us around Premiere. He's got a lot of downloadable stuff for free that you can use and leverage. And I think you're gonna dig that too. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, get started here. And I'm going to use my, um, my trailer for this uh, Alaskan adventure. I'm just gonna turn the sound down here. And here, I'm just gonna make one other little changed my setup here. Just give me one second. All right. And we're going to start with this. Now, obviously this original content was shot. Uh, this was a, a largely um, stock video. So this is uh, 1080p and it's widescreen. Now, again, if we're going really super retro VHS, we're not dealing with widescreen. Yes, they did produce widescreen letterboxed versions of video for VHS but most of it was four by three. We're gonna to get to that at the end, okay? And then we're gonna talk about that a bit more when we get over to Kelsey's um, variation of all this. But we're gonna start here um, with this original footage as is, and just kind of show you how you stylize and start working with this. Okay, now the first part of the process is actually to begin using some of the effects in Lumetri Color, and specifically just making some basic adjustments to the video itself to kind of pre-treat it before we get into stylizing it a bit more. So the first thing we're going to do is um, under the basic corrections panel. So by the way, if you don't see Lumetri Color, you can go into the color workspace. You can also, of course, access that via the window menu, all right? So I'm over here in Lumetri Color. And the first thing we're gonna do is just make a quick contrast adjustment. So we're gonna up the contrast to around 55%. No, hold on, I just wanna make sure I'm on that. Yeah, I am, okay, very good. All right, so again, just kind of increase that contrast just a bit, all right? So let's make sure we got this on here, there we go. All right, making sure we're on the right sequence too, always helps, all right? And then we're going to go over to the white level here and we're gonna drop that down. All right, let's drop it to around minus 45 or so. 
All right, so quick contrast and white balance or white level adjust here. You could also maybe adjust some of those highlights, uh, maybe drop those ever so slightly as well. Okay, let's go over into creative now. And we're going to go under the adjustments section, which may or may not be twirled down for you. This adds the ability to do um, faded film, sharp and vibrant saturation, and then shadow and highlight tinting as well. So I want to kind of add, we increase the contrast, but now we want to kind of take a bit of that digital edge off by adding a slightly more lower contrast faded film aesthetic. That's what this slider does. So let's go ahead and drag this in. All right, and you see if we bring it way up, it kind of gets super flat looking, which is cool. That actually already can, can kind of simulate a VHS look. I don't want to push it too far because we're going to going to kind of accentuate that a bit more later, but maybe we'll go to around 41. Now, again, this is a lot of kind of different mixed shots here. This is this is the the mixed version of the or the edited um, rendered version of this video. So this is a global treatment happening at the same value across everything. Now, just on that, we're going to de-vibrance the clip. All right, so we're going to take the vibrance down. Let's do around minus 25 or so here. All right, and then we're going to add in some sharpening. Now, I've talked about the sharpen control on here before, and particularly with digital video, right? You've heard me say, you know, <laughs> I have a song called Fear the Q-Tip. I think I'm going to write another one called Beware the Sharpen. Be very careful with sharpen for like 12K, 8K, 6K, 4K modern digital production. If we're trying to simulate VHS, VHS, you kind of had two, two looks to VHS, and, and specifically when you shot it yourself, it was either really super sharp to the point where you felt like the scan lines were cutting you or it was just blurry, all right? If you want to simulate that kind of harsh, unnaturally, you know, unnaturally sharpened kind of look, this is going to do that. And we're going to, uh, I think the tutorial originally that I saw was like around 70. I'm going to go to around 60%, okay? So just real quickly, here's the before and here's the after. And it already just looks, it just looks different. It kind of looks like, oh, did you shoot this on a DV cam? So we're getting there. We're going, we're going back, we're going back in the decades, all right? Let's real quickly check on some comments. All right. <laughs> Very nice. And yes, Mallory, that video was real. Just to be very clear, not staged, all right? That was, again, 27 takes worth, probably six hours of filmed footage all cut together to be funny, but, you know, that was, that was really it. All right, Chris Austria. Thank you very much for the hair comment. What mic am I using for vocals? On that one, it's an AT4050 multi-pattern condenser. Okay, all right. So, okay, so we've got uh, sharpen, vibrance, faded film, white, and contrast adjust. Okay, very cool. So now we're gonna twirl this one up. Let's go into curves here. And we're going to make an adjustment down to our, whoops, I don't wanna do that. Uh, an adjustment to our master curve. All right, something like this. Bring this down a little bit more. All right. And then we're going to adjust the green channel ever so slightly. And then we're going to adjust the blue channel, all right? And what you're going for, if you're trying to replicate what the curve values look like, this is this is what your this is what your result should look like here inside of curves, okay? Again, we're gonna get back to splitting apart the RGB layers in just a moment, all right? That's all we're gonna do in curves. Go ahead and twirl that up and let's go into vignette. And now let's add a little bit of vignetting, all right? Not something that you'd always see with VHS looks, but pretty common. Um, anywhere from around one to two, it just kind of depends what kind of look you're going for. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we may eventually readjust the sequence settings here to reframe this in the more standard four by three aspect. So if you're gonna do something very dramatic like this, you know, um, if we then crop this video, you're you're gonna, you're going to lose a bit of those edges. So it's really entirely up to you. I'm going to do around 1.5 though, again, just to add a little dark, a little sort of more contrast in there and give it a little more, a little more edge. All right. So now at this point, this is where we're going to start adding some effects to this. Okay. So we're going to come over to effects, which I actually have 
up here. Let me see, let me dock this over here. All right, yeah, let's do that. I don't typically dock them over there. I feel, I feel so, I feel so lost. Okay, and we're going to add not a channel blue, a channel blur. Let's go ahead and double click and add the channel blur. Now over here in the effects controls, you'll see that you've got uh, the top three are the, are the basic parameters here that we're going to adjust, all right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the red blurriness around 22, okay? Under, we're gonna leave bl blue at zero, alpha and green at zero. Under edge behavior, we're going to check the box here to repeat edge pixels. And then under blur dimensions, we're gonna go vertical, all right? You can already see that a bit of that red fringing, okay? So this is kind of indicative of that VHS look. Also, some of you might be going, hmm, is he doing like a, a stereoscopic thing? No, but <laughs> again, similar kind of look if you've got your blue and red glasses on. All right, now, taking that a step further, let's go ahead and twirl this one up. We're gonna add another channel blur to this. And as you can now imagine, we're going to adjust some of the other channel blurs. And in this case, we're gonna deal with the blue blurriness. All right, we're gonna add around 40 to that. I'm gonna repeat edge pixels here. But this time, instead of vertical for the blur dimension, we're gonna go horizontal, okay? And maybe we'll add just a little bit more of red blurriness in there. Actually, I'm gonna take this down just a little bit. Not quite 16, let's do around 33 or so. All right, something like that, okay? Now you're really kind of seeing that fringe in there. Again, if you wanna add more of the red in there, it's kind of gonna give you an idea of what that looks like. Okay, just gonna back this off a little bit. Twirl up the channel blur. And now for the last step here, we're going to add the unsharp mask. Now again, on traditional nowadays, you know, digitally shot video that's gonna be edited digitally, distributed digitally, we're not going for any retro look. I wouldn't use this unsharp mask effect. For VHS, it's perfect. So we're gonna set the amount to 100 and the radius is what's going to control that crunchy, you'll know, you'll know it when you see it, all right? We're gonna set the radius to around 12, uh, let's do around 10 for starters here and see what that does. And you can just kind of see that now you're almost getting, if you've ever used the clarity control, right, in Lightroom, and you kind of get that just really over accentuated, punchy sharpness, that's what we're getting here, all right? Let's start scrubbing through this. We've got a lot of really green, it's looking a bit more green than I expected. I think there's just a lot of green in these shots. And I guess it is, it is Alaska after all. Just make sure what I've got in here. Okay, red, I'm gonna increase the red a little bit more here. All right, let's punch up a bit more of that red. Oh, that's weird. I'm seeing a different value once it goes into, let me change my quality setting here. That's weird. I'm getting a slightly different look when it's playing versus when it's, uh, when I'm adjusting versus when it's actually playing that back. All right. It's looking very green. That's good. You're really getting to see the fringiness right there. Okay. All right. So we've got the unsharp mask on here now. Okay. And this is kind of creating that again, kind of that just those bleeding edges. All right. Very indicative of VHS. Now, at this point, there's two additional things that I would probably do to this, okay? So we're gonna go over to effects here. Now you can find these all over the place online. Again, what automatically kind of makes this sort of lose its VHS-ness is that you didn't, you didn't typically see widescreen things like this, and certainly not widescreen that filled the whole frame, typically, certainly in the early days of VHS. So if you wanna keep it wide, but you wanna kind of simulate that four by three look, you can do it with overlays. Now you can create these directly from within Premiere inside of Photoshop. Also, if you just look for four by three overlay, Google it, you'll find all kinds of, you know, transparent ping overlays that you could just drop directly over top of this. This is one that I found online. It's called a four by three vintage. It's also a four by three modern. So I'm gonna take this, all right, and drag it across 
all the footage here. Now, what makes it kind of vintagey is that you see, really, this is just a rounded rectangular box, right? Where we've added some feathering to the edges. Kind of looks like the old school, you know, old school TV. All right. So if we play this back now, it's really got a green fringe there. It's coming out so green. All right. It just has just this really dirty, gritty kind of look. Slightly more over accentuated than I'd like. Um, but once you do the four by three thing, it kind of really sells it. Now, again, we've got the modern one here. The only difference with that one is, as you'll see, is that that eliminates, let's take this out of here, that eliminates the soft um, feathered edge, okay? So this is just kind of giving you more of the, um, this classic, you know, classic straight ahead four by three, you know, if, assume when you've entered like 2000, 99, 2000, right? <laughs> This one, this one looks a bit more 70s TV, 80s TV. All right. Why that's popping through like that? Okay. In any case, that's one basic example. Again, we could tweak these colors ad infinitum. I'm not going to do that now. You kind of get the idea how this works. All right. And if you're starting to see that fringe, you're doing it correctly. Okay. So let's go on to the second version of this. So we're just going to simply come over here under effects controls. By the way, if you wanted to save this at a later date, which I think I already did, um, remember we did this in another tutorial, another masterclass a couple weeks ago, we can select all of the effects here in the effects controls panel, right click, control click, and choose to save preset, right? And that will create a preset for us inside of our, our um, effects preset. So if I, if I go over here to effects, oh, they're over here, sorry. Uh, let's uncheck that and go into presets, VHS, all right, VHS look. Let's drag this on our video here. There it is. Okay, so this is one that I created just, just earlier. This one's got some noise on it as well. A little too much noise, frankly. Um, and it's also coming through a bit more blurry, which is interesting too. All right, a lot less green. Oh, it's getting so much green on there. Okay. But you get the idea. You can save it, you can bring it back, and it kind of gives you a slightly more retro. And look, look now, I did a slightly more dramatic uh, vignette on here, and you can see it just really kind of sells, sells that look. All right, let's get that out of here. Let's get these out of here. Okay. So now we're going to do the Premiere Gal version of this. And this one, I think, again, I think this one looks even better. Okay. Really, really cool. And it's something that, uh, and yeah, Ken Crawley, yes. You could add some of the tracking noise. Again, you can find these overlays all over the internet. I'm gonna show you in a moment. I have some of these that you can use via adjustment layers. Um, <laughs> VHS can be triggering, right? I know, it's a weird thing. It does, it for me especially, it transports me back to not just Saturday morning TV, but just the, the process of watching an old 19-inch color CRT television, I know. I know exactly what you mean. All right. Mallory, you still have your VHS camera and player. That is amazing. I actually still have, I have a VHS, I don't have a camera. I have a player. Haven't tried it in a while. Um, I don't have any way to digitize it. I need a couple of new cards to digitize that old stuff. But I do have a ton of, v not a ton. I have probably a dozen VHSs from my, my childhood that uh, might be worth it. Shiladitya, what system configuration are you on? So this is an iMac 2017, iMac 5K, 64 gigs of RAM, two terabyte SSD, eight gig uh, ATI Radeon video card, and we're using metal acceleration in here. All right, now for the second method, this one, you start out by working in a four by three aspect. So right away, it kind of already has a very retro -y kind of vibe from the start. So to do that, we're going to actually use the new sequence uh, button down here. You can see that as I scroll over it. See a little tooltip there. Let's go under new item and we're going to choose sequence. And we're going to twirl down under DV, NTSC, or, uh, or PAL, depending upon where you are. All right, we're here in 2997 land. So um, again, you'll notice there is a widescreen DV, NTSC. But I don't want that. I want to go traditional 4x3, 48K, 2997. You can see the old frame size and the old aspect ratio. I couldn't remember this. I don't know. I think this may have been on another masterclass. <laughs> Thinking about what was DVNTSC? 
0.9. I mean, I just, oh my God, just haven't thought about that in forever. But this also shows you again, you're in a four by three um, scenario here. Also, this is interlaced. Now we don't technically need that. Um, we just should, the film, the, the footage here is progressive. I'm not gonna worry about that for right now. Of course, if you wanted to adjust that, you can just do that right here uh, like this. And because this was actually progressive scan, let's just put this into progressive. We don't, we don't actually need to, to do interlaced. So let's go ahead and choose okay on that. We'll give this, we'll call it VHS Alaska, four by three. All right, and we have a nice blank timeline. So I'm gonna take my Alaska video, drag it into track one, all right, and this is a uh, this is a checkbox that you'll checkbox. This is an option that you'll see when you drag footage into a pre-created sequence. It's going to ask you, do you want to change the sequence settings based on the characteristics of the footage you're using, or keep them? We want to keep it because I want to put my 1080 footage right now in this 4x3 720 480 uh, frame. Let's go ahead and keep the settings, okay? So if we play this back, all right, obviously you can see that it needs to be scaled down first and foremost. So let's go up to effects controls. All right, two inch quad with banding, yes. <laughs> uh, I would say good times, but I don't know, they're okay times, interesting times. Let's go ahead and scale the video down, okay? Now again, you can see here, right, widescreen. This is like if we had, if we had done a, you know, you would purchase widescreen VHS tapes, it would say now with the widescreen version of, I think I had Monsters Inc. on a VHS. Now maybe not Monsters Inc. Maybe it was Toy Story on a widescreen VHS. And this is what you got. You always got letterboxing. So they could deliver it that way. But even most televisions were still square, you know, physically square in shape then. They weren't, they weren't rectangles yet. Um, so we're just going to fill the frame here. All right. That's, you know, and of course we can um, reframe it accordingly. So if we're like missing some of the action here, horizontally or vertically, we can readjust accordingly. All right, but we're just gonna do something like that. Around 45% will automatically fill our frame. Okay, very cool. All right, so now we've got that, we've scaled it down. Okay, now before we do anything else, because again, this is the mixed clip and you can do this on individual clips or on an adjustment layer. Uh, we're gonna come over to our blend mode here and we're going to use the linear dodge add option here. And this is going to enable um, the, RG, the RGB split after we add some of the color balance effects that we're gonna work with in just a second here. But you wanna start by adding that, uh, that blend mode. And that's kind of one of the key elements to Kelsey's tutorial here, which I thought was really, really good and made a lot of sense. Now, the other thing you're going to do to get started here, let me just twirl this up a bit so I can give myself a little bit more screen real estate, is you're gonna make three copies of that video. Uh, and in fact, here, let's just add a few more tracks. Uh, let's add three more video tracks. We're not gonna add any audio tracks. And I'm simply gonna hold down Option or Alt on Windows, and I'm gonna drag up another copy of the video on track two and drag up and add another copy of the video on track three. Don't worry that it's looking all blown out for right now. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna tackle that right now. Okay, so we're going to start by adding the um, color balance RGB effect to each of those instances of the video. Let's type in color balance RGB. Okay, now keep in mind again, you got several different color balance effects here in Premiere. The one that we want is color balance RGB, all right? Let's go ahead and drag that down onto the first clip here. And very simply, as you can imagine, we have three parameters. So we're gonna leave red at 100, green at zero, blue at zero, all right? Let's move on to the next clip. Color balance, all right. So now we're gonna leave red at zero, green at 100, and blue at zero, all right? On to the next one, double click to add color balance. Red zero, green zero, blue 100, all right? And if you've done this process right, what you will see is that it should look exactly as it did before we duplicated, before we added any effects, right? Because now those three instances, each one of them is corresponding to one of the 
RGB color layers. So this is what you should end up with exactly where you started. Now this is where it gets a little cool because now we're going to be able to start to pull these apart. All right, start adding those uh, um, RGB looking fringes. All right, so let's go ahead and start here. We're just going to adjust this one. Ever oh, went way too far there. Sorry, just do a little bit. All right, around 236 ish on our blue layer. Let's come down to the green one. All right. And again, you could adjust this as much as you like. Bring it right about there again. And maybe that's a little too much, but maybe we'll just go a little, we'll go a little extreme, a little more extreme here. Okay. All right. We're almost there. A couple more things we need to do. So back up at the top here, we're going to add an adjustment layer. All right. So let's go over to our effects, adjustment layer. Again, note that it's taking all the settings of our sequence for us automatically. We don't have to think about it. All right. And we're going to stick this on the topmost layer here and drag it out for the duration. So the last elements here, much like you saw in the other one, we have the option here to add a little bit of noise. And then one of the things that Kelsey has in there is using the wave warp effect, which kind of gives you that, again, that scan line, scan line thing that you would see on VHS, especially overplayed tapes where you know, kind of get this, this tear across the screen, you know? <laughs> You'll see what I mean when you see it in a second here. All right, so on the adjustment layer, this is now where we're going to apply a little bit of noise and a little bit of wave warp. So once again, up to effects, come over here under noise and we're looking for the noise effect. All right. So I'm going to drag that onto the adjustment layer. Let me just pop over and see if we've got some questions here. All right. Ritorshi. Yes, we're going to get to super eight and, and, and actually film in just a second here. All right. Very cool. <laughs> Mallory, I can't let it go. I know. Hey, listen, my, uh, I, I uh, was talking with my mom recently, and she was saying how, um, you know, she still had a television with like the built-in VHS, and it just died. Like it just recently died. It's kind of sad. End of an era. Okay. So for noise, again, you don't want to go too extreme with this um, VHS noise versus what this noise. Frankly, for my money, looks a bit more grainy than noise. Um, but if, if applied, you know, not too liberally, I think it looks pretty good. So if we go to around, like you can see, as we kind of drag this up, it starts to get real grainy. I think the typical recommendation is around 15. I like around 12%. Maybe that's even a little too much, 11. The key here though, is you want to use color noise. And again, um, anyone who's familiar with doing this, uh, using noise reduction in, in Lightroom, we want to add the color noise because again, that's going to emphasize that RG, those RGB values. If you turn off color noise, then it's really doing more of a simulated grain. So we don't want that. You, you do want using the color noise. That's just going to sell the idea a little bit better. Okay. And then the last element here is wave warp. So let's go ahead and add that. Now there's a whole bunch of parameters here. Whoa, a little craziness right there whole bunch of parameters that we need to adjust. So let's go ahead and zoom in here and do just that. Okay. So first thing is wave type. So under wave type, we're going to adjust this to square. All right. First do that and you'll see how it changes. All right. Getting somewhere. By the way, anytime you see those thick horizontal and vertical bars, you're like, oh yes, I'm feeling, <laughs> I, I'm feeling and sensing where you're going with this. We leave the wave height the same. We want to adjust the wave width. And we're going to go to a value of around a thousand. Okay. This was Kelsey's special, special sauce here. Now for direction, the default is set at 90 degrees. We're going to set this to zero. All right. And then under wave speed. Now this is the only parameter in here, which uh, it's, it's a little aggressive for my taste. Um, the thing is, if you remember VHS and that, that tearing that you would sometimes see, 
it was the frequency was it was frequent, but it was, this this is almost like too fast, even at its lowest value. So let's see. I've actually never tried point one. Let's see if we can go to point one and see if that works a little better. And then the last thing that we need to do, you notice that we have a little bit of a little bit of pillar boxing here. Under pinning, we're going to say all edges, and by doing that, it's going to remove any of that pillar boxing, so that we're just we're going to see the tear, but it's going to fill the frame the whole time. We're going to leave everything else as it is. All right. Okay. Now the very last element here, and this was something that Kelsey added, and I think this is a great little addition, is to obviously add some text, right? And you can do this um, with um, the Essential Graphics panel, right? Effectively building a Mogurt, really, with you know, sort of VHS text effects. So let's go ahead and click the text tool. And let's click up here right on screen. Whoa, it looks like very big text. We're simply going to type play. Now, hold on. I'm going to move this down. We'll, we'll, we'll adjust this in just a second, so bear with me here, OK? And let's go into our uh, Mogurt here. Let's drag this over to the beginning and out for the duration. All right, and by the way, you notice I placed it under the adjustment layer so that it's now getting the wave warp and the noise applied to it. It's also going to soften it a little bit. All right, let's go over to our essential graphics. So this is where we can edit that text because obviously that font isn't going to do it. So let's go ahead and select the text here. All right. slow glitch. What is happening? What is happening? And under text, now I typically, um, I typically use Courier for trying to do like that, you know, that old school VHS. Although, yeah, I noticed this the other day. It just kind of looks, it, it's, it's too, too digital typewritery. It's not, it's not actually, how I want it to be. So Kelsey was using a font, which maybe it's on Adobe Fonts. I'm going to go see if it is. Um, that was called VCR Mono or something like that. What do we have this at? Let's do this at 48, by the way. So reposition this. Man, I don't know why I'm so laggy. It's live, friends. I can't fake that. Sorry. All right. And let's just go really quickly. Let's go into manage fonts here. Let's browse more. I want to see if I can find find that font because that really is. What's it called? VHS OSD. Let's see if that was an Adobe font. Okay, it wasn't an Adobe font, so it must just be an internet font that you can find. Okay, but they don't have the, they don't have it. All right, that's fine. Courier it is then. All right, we don't even have a light. Courier. That just, this is, it needs to be lighter. There are better ones. VCR -O -O -S OSD Mono, I think, was the one she was using. Now, again, if that's not an Adobe font, what that means is if you make a Mogurt and give it to somebody who doesn't have that font installed, they won't be able to display it properly. As long as you have it installed and to whomever you share it with has it installed, it will always display properly. Okay. Yeah, that just doesn't really look particularly believable, but <laughs> sorry. And make it a little smaller. It needs it needs to be thinner, right? It's just there's something not quite right. All right, let's take our text tool here, and then again, you know, you would typically see, uh, you know, date and time. So what is it today? Oh seven, seventeen, twenty. Man, it's really coming in slow. Oh, what's going on? It's weird. As someone was just asking me, what kind of machine are you using? I don't know. It's normally faster than this. Or did they normally spell it out? Now I'm remembering. Yeah, so let's do July 17, 2020. All right. Yeah, that just doesn't look very realistic at all. You need the right font, and it just has to blend a bit more. We're going to blur this, too. And then usually it had a time, some kind of time code on it, right? So 11, 14 AM. All right, and we could add some additional like overlay glitchiness to this. I think that would kind of help with that too. 
Let me just verify something here real quickly since this just seems to be slugging along. General. I'm just going to go to this for a second. It's really, it's really sluggish. And I don't know why. Leave it on that frame for a second. All right, we're going to go back to metal. All right. And then the last thing um, on the text itself, like I said, now, again, it's getting some of the graininess uh, from the video here. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of fast blur on there, on the text. All right. And let's do about a one pixel blur, just to kind of saw that makes it a little better, it softens it a little bit, okay? Now, with all this stuff on here, I don't think I need to render the whole thing. Let's go ahead and render the entire work area. Let's see how long that's gonna take. And while that's doing that, before we get to some of the film effects here, we've got nine minutes, so we've got good time. Man, is that really gonna take five minutes? All right, no. No. What? Why? Nothing on here. What's happening? All right, let's go back over and let's render this now. You're gonna get, you're gonna get 20 seconds. Why? Well, this is gonna say two and a half minutes now. Better not be. Throw my coffee at this machine. All right, let's answer some questions in the meantime. Eric Silverdale, the font low res from Adobe Fonts would be work good. Oh, cool. All right, yeah, here, wait, let's check that out. I still have the window open. Low res. There it is. Oh, yeah, that kind of. Yes. It's almost a little too. This looks, you know what this reminds me of? It's close. This this looks a little more like um, uh, like McPaint McDraw. Like if, <laughs> if anybody remembers um, remembers those, some of the original, the OG um, OG fonts with the OG painting, drawing, what was it? It was McPaint, McDraw, and was it McType? I don't remember. Was it MacType? Yeah. Anyway, this is pretty good. It's pretty close. Let's see if we just do like play. Yeah, I mean, it's, again, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. That VHS OSD mono is, is even better. That one's pretty good. Thank you for that suggestion. All right. Hydrophilia. Oh, let's check out that one while we're still rendering. Hydrophilia. There it is. I, again, pretty pretty similar here. Pretty good. Got to find that other one. The other one was really, really spectacular. All right. So let's just activate this. Okay. Font activation successful. Okay, clicking back to Premiere. Thank you, Ritorshi. Oh my God, it just told me that I have to restart the render? What? No, I don't want to do that. It's playing very choppily. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of killing my mojo here. Let me, uh... Let me render this work area. When you're hot, you're hot. When you're not, you're not. I'm gonna I'm gonna kick this iMac in the face. This video looks like the opening sequence of The Shining. Oh my god, that's the best that's the best comment I could ever have. By the way, that is my all-time favorite thriller. I was gonna say scary movie. I don't know. <laughs> what am I eight? All-time favorite thriller for cinematography. 
I mean, there's so many great stories, but I love the story and the music. The Wendy Carlos score in that, to this day, absolutely scares the living daylights out of me. It scares me. As a 46-year-old man, I have to kind of... <laughs> it's so brilliant. So thank you. I love it. This escalated quickly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's been one of those weeks. Plus, that's the benefit of starting with a, you know, creative meltdown video is that this just could be one of those days. I've had a couple of really good successful days of very good creative output. Maybe going into the weekend, it's just not going to happen. When I want to feel more creative, when I was planning on doing some scoring uh, and some mastering, it just might not happen. Okay, we're almost done. Hey, Steve. No, this is the release version, and I actually took all the betas off temporarily. I, 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 we're just in a gremlin-y situation here. Also, working with a DVN-TSC sequence, uh, I, that, I imagine that's contributing to what we're seeing here, because we weren't seeing it with the other videos. So, much. so all right. There you go. Oh, nice. Okay. Oh, and here, let me, let me put this back to full now. So, this is great. Okay. And you're, you're seeing the the wave warp, right? That little scan line right there. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. Um, pretty cool. I mean, that looks that looks decidedly pretty realistic. Again, the noise is is, is a little is a little much. Um, but overall, that's that's pretty good. You really can appreciate it here because again. You're seeing kind of, it almost looks like interlacing, the flickering of the white, of the, of the ice and the water there. I mean, that, that feels very VHS-y. Again, versus if we just take a look at the original source here. All right, we kind of put these side by side. Maybe three seconds in. So, you know, here's the same, here's the same frame. That's kind of a cool view, you know. It's kind of neat. And as you look at those mountains again, and imagine watching this on a, on a, on a CRT, it, it has that vibe. That text is killing me, but it has that vibe. Okay. Very cool. All right. So for the very last thing we're going to do here in our last three minutes is just, I just wanted to reveal a couple of the options, which we've talked about many times before, um, in Premiere, but first, uh, I talked about Vashi Visuals. So again, my friend Vashi Nidomansky, you can go to his site, vashivisuals.com, okay? And on his site, he has a whole series of aspect ratio templates for free. So one of the instant ways that you can not only make something retro-y a la VHS, but give it a more kind of cinematic or classic film Hollywood look is by using the appropriate aspect ratio crops to effectively give you that very wide cinematic kind of vibe. Now, he goes into all the detail about a 1.78 aspect, 185, 235, which is a pretty typical um, uh, for, again, like cinematic stuff. Got the like extreme 4.0, 2.39. These are all free, and he gives them to you in a whole series of sizes. So again, now this is um, this is 1080 content, right? Let me check. Yeah, this is 1080. So under uh, I have his 2K option. If I wanted to give this footage here just an instantly more cinematic look, I'm going to grab his 2K 235 overlay, drop it on like this. And again, right away, if I just mute that, it just it just automatically has this. It's just more cinematic looking, right? Just by adding that letterboxing at that very specific two, three, five, it just, holy, what? Everything looks wider. It, it, now I'm thinking like, wow, did I shoot this with a, a 24 millimeter lens? This is all stock footage, by the way, so <laughs> that isn't. But um, it just changes everything instantly. You know, similarly, if we were to go to that, uh, my meltdown video. Now this one, this is 4K. All right, we're gonna scale this to the frame size here. Do the same thing. So let's go to like the, let's go to the, the, the 255 for this one, all right? 
It's not the things that inspire you, it's the people. You know, same concept. It just, it, there's just something about that that just makes it look inherently more cinematic, all right? Now, in conjunction with all of that, if you go back over to Lumetri, I want to remind you that you have, of course, all of your creative looks and LUTs. And the first 10 or 12 or so LUTs that you have are these film stock LUTs. And what the naming conventions of these means, where it's just like Fuji Kodak, shot on Fuji film, processed on Kodak film. Shot on Kodak 5218, processed on 2383. And if you cycle through these, you've got this little arrow here. This is going to allow you to cycle through them and kind of give you a different approach, a different look, a different aesthetic vibe um, for your content. Some of them offer, again, some like slightly different color adjustments here in conjunction with a little bit of faded film. You know, you can make it really kind of stand out and really look very, very retro, okay? Now, in conjunction with that, if you search the web, and now I purchased mine from Rampant Design, gosh, a million years ago, you can find things like scratches and overlays. Um, if we just take a look real quickly at one of these, these are to be leveraged with uh, blend modes. So if I go ahead and overlay this, or in fact, maybe screen will be better for this one. This is going to add, no, overlay is what I want. This is going to add, again, some of that uh, kind of noisy, film-like look to this, right? And just real quickly, I mean, it just automatically gives it that kind of vibe. If you want to drop the frame rate, again, you can have lost frames here. It really makes a very significant difference very, very quickly. But unfortunately, my friends, that is all the time we have. So stay tuned. We've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge coming up. So until next time, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world, and we'll see you again next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.